Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I posted my last update and in all honesty, I decided not to make any videos unless I have anything new or interesting to share. And for about two weeks, I basically just worked on code optimizations, which would not make for a very interesting video. Today, however, we will go through the health UI and flashlight update, enemy manager for the enemy spawner, as well as the inventory and objective update. Let's start off with the health UI and flashlight update. The bottom left of the screen, you can see that I've now implemented a health status. Instead of going with a traditional health bar like in so many games, I've decided to go with this style of health status because it was inspired by Resident Evil. Now the health status will have three conditions. It will start off with good and then as you lose health, it will eventually drop down to fair and finally it's going to get to critical. Critical is the danger state where if you get detected again or lose any more health, then obviously the player will die. You've probably noticed when I'm walking around, the player is always in a injured state. So this is something I'm going to update later on by implementing a fine walk state as well. So you can actually see the difference when you are dropping, let's say from good to critical. Let's move on to the flashlight. Now you can see just below the health status, I have a depleting bar. Before I turned on the flashlight, it was purely just an on and off switch. The depleting bar is rechargeable, so you don't need to walk around in the, in the game and look for batteries. I think it makes more sense considering the game is set in a science fiction setting. And I've also decided to just implement three conditions for the flashlight. So that's what I'm doing now in Visual Studio. The reason for that is I need a way to communicate to the player that the flashlight is depleting or the flashlight charge is running out. So I decided to go with three conditions. The first condition will be gray. If your flashlight charge is above a certain percentage, and then you eventually it will drop down to the medium charge, which would be represented by yellow. And then finally, it's gonna be red. Now the red obviously is critical, similar to the health. So the player would know that the flashlight is gonna switch off automatically. At this point, you'll actually notice that I've moved the flashlight bar as well as the health status to the top left of the screen. I think having all of the UI elements in the same part of the screen just looks a lot better than having it scattered between the top and the bottom like I added before. You'll also notice that the flashlight bar has now transitioned from gray to yellow and it's quite noticeable. And then it's going to finally transition from yellow to red. I'm also thinking of adding a slight flicker to the light towards the end maybe the last 5% of the battery. It will add a nice dramatic effect and it will be the final reminder to the player that the flashlight is just about to run out. Now let's move on to the enemy manager or enemy spawner. In Unity, whenever you load up a scene, or in this case you enter a room, all the enemies and items that were placed there will be loaded up. Now if I were to kill the enemy in a specific room and then exit the room and come back again later, the enemy will be reloaded. Now this creates a problem for survival horror. Since ammunition is always limited, you need to be able to track if an enemy was killed since the player will not be able to kill every single enemy multiple times. So I will need a script that will persist between scenes to keep track of all the enemies that were killed. This is my enemy manager script. At this point in the script, I've just declared a few variables. And the main point is now just to find the locations of all the spawn points within the scene. And I also have a variable to keep track of the name of the current scene. Since I only want to spawn enemies in a specific scene, I don't want to spawn enemies in every single scene or every single room. What I'm doing now is just adding the prefab of the enemy to the script. And I'll be testing it out to see if I can actually locate all of the spawn points. Usually this is a workflow that I follow. As you can see, I've basically found all of the four references to the spawn points in the specific level. Now let's move on to the next part of the script. First thing I'm going to do now is I will look for a specific scene. In this case, I'm looking for cargo area number 10. And if we are inside of the cargo area number 10 or we've loaded up the specific scene, I'm going to check if I found my enemy spawn locations. And if that reference check does not return null, then I will check if the enemy is alive. And because I'm going to spawn four enemies, I will have four if statements. Now I'm going to instantiate the enemy or spawn enemy at each location. 
The only issue is that I've noticed now, I've declared game objects as a enemy location. Now I should have declared a transform. Now a game object I can still use to get the enemy location. The only thing is it's going to take a few more lines of code. To keep things simple, I've changed the declaration from a game object to a transform. What a transform does is gives me easy access to the x, y, and z coordinates, which is basically the location where I'm going to spawn this enemy. So as you can see, I'm using the enemy spawn location dot position dot x, and then dot y, and then dot z. So I do that four times, making sure that I'm using a specific spawn location instead of using the same spawn location for all four enemies. Now we need to jump back into Unity to test and see if the code is functioning properly. First of all, I need to just set these bools to true. Now let's see. Off the bat, you can see something is wrong. Instead of spawning four enemies, I'm actually spawning dozens of enemies. Now the reason for that is my spawn code is in my update method. And in the update method, the spawn code will run every single frame. So depending on how many frames the game is running, it will continuously spawn enemies. So I have to go back into the code just to fix that. So the way I'm going to fix it by declaring four bools, and each bool will be associated with a specific enemy. Now this bool is spawn enemy once. So now before spawning enemy, I will have two parameters. Enemy is alive and spawn enemy once. If both of those are true, I will be able to go ahead and spawn enemy. So I'm just uh, declaring that the spawn enemy once bool is true. And the first thing I'm going to do once I enter this uh, block of code, I will set my spawn enemy once to false. Basically what that means is the next frame, this line of code will run. It will not be able to spawn enemies again. It will only be able to spawn enemies once, as the name implies. Now let's go back into Unity just to test and see if it's functioning properly. I need to just again set the en is enemy alive bool to true. And as you can see, it works. I've only spawned four enemies, which is exactly what I want to happen. Moving on. So if I were to kill these enemies, currently my enemy manager script does not have any way of actually tracking the enemies alive or dead. So that is something I'm going to add into the next part of the enemy manager script. In the interest of saving time, I will not go into detail on how I track to see if the enemy is live or dead. That is basically just a bool that fires on my enemy script that communicates with the enemy spawner. This is the completed enemy manager script. As you can see, I start off by declaring a whole bunch of variables, multiple bools, transforms, game objects, and I also have a reference to my inventory manager as well as my quest tracker script and in my update script i check to see if, uh, if i'm in a specific scene I, I also do a if statement to check if i have located any existing enemies in the level if that returns zero and i'm able to spawn an enemy then the code will go ahead and spawn the exact amount of enemies based on the enemy is alive bulls now let's jump into unity and see how the completed enemy manager script works I'm in the exact same scene. I've spawned four enemies. As you can see, I've killed two. Now I'm exiting. And I will spawn another two because those were the two enemies remaining. I'm no longer spawning a total of four enemies, which is awesome. And I will check it one more time. And I've spawned only one enemy. So that is exactly what I wanted to happen. Now let's move on to the inventory and objective update. Up until this point in the development of the game, I will just show you how the objectives used to function. Here you can see that I've collected a EPU switch, which is an objective item. Now I need to proceed to the objective marker. Once I reach the objective marker, I press the action button to cycle through the various dialogues. So at this point, the EPU switch will be automatically inserted into the emergency power unit. Now that is the way all the special items used to work in relation to objectives. Now I will show you the small update that I've made. So basically you do the same thing, you collect the special objective item. However, now once you reach the emergency power unit, 
you can either cycle through the dialogue options. This will serve as a reminder for any player who forgot what they have to do. However, now to use the objective item, you have to go into inventory and actually you click on use. This seems like a very small update guys, but it actually took me a long time to implement into the rest of the game. And it fundamentally changed how the flow of the objectives currently work. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.